Hello, it's Preston Weeks here, founder of Formula EQ, with number one selling author in the world, 59 number one New York Times bestsellers, Mark Victor Hansen, author of books like Chicken Soup for the Soul, Aladdin Factor, One Minute Millionaire, and many, many others. And on top of that, he is known as the master storyteller. Not many people in the world have told as many stories as this man I have here with me today. And so we are starting a discussion on the power of telling your story because Mark has leveraged the power of telling his story and he has sold over half a billion books and impacted so many lives around the world. And so we want to share things that will help to inspire you to share your story, reasons why you share your story, things that you can do when you share your story with your friends or the people that you know in your life. So get excited, listen up. We're, we're live here and we're sharing amazing, amazing things with you. So welcome. Thank you, Mark. My pleasure, Preston. And hi, everybody out there. And every one of you has a story. And, and what we're doing now with the Mark Victor Hansen Library is we bring your story as a book to life. And everybody's got a story. And what happens is a book is something that is lasting. And let me just do it backwards and say, if we could go through all the generations back, two or three or four generations, wouldn't you love to know what your parents, grandparents, great, 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 great grandparents said, thought, did, felt, how they lived and what it was like. And you're the one that can change that by writing your story whether you're self-published, publish with us, publish a big house, but don't do nothing. That's one of the four choices. Do nothing with your story, but you've got this story inside and, and you keep telling it to all your best friends and your best friends say, Preston, I'm going to use him as example A here. You got to write that book. And all of you have heard it probably if you're watching this and, and then you say, well, I'm going to do that someday. Well, Zig Ziglar used to say someday never comes because there is no someday. There's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and all that. So Let's make someday today and decide in favor of yourself under whatever circumstance to bring your story to life. And, and by the way, just the mere act of writing it or dictating it, having it transcribed on outer AI or whatever, makes you feel bigger, better, stronger, bolder. And because we're helping so many people with their stories in life, they're just, they're saying, I now know why I'm alive. I now understand why I have full meaning because I'm passionately purposeful doing X to get to my happiness. And everybody has to serve greatly to get to X. And everybody can be great at something. My, uh, Martin Luther King said, you can be a great janitor, you can be a great anything, great doctor, great student. Hopefully, we're giving you great information on this uh, podcast that Preston has been so kind to invite me on. I love it. So that's the thing that I love the point that out that anyone can be great at something. So there's a lot of experts. You know, I went to a mastermind a little while ago. It was a $25,000 mastermind. And they were hiring in keynote speakers all the time to come and talk. And what they realized is that they had a room full of experts there. And so they had a room full of experts. So instead of hiring people, they just started bringing people in from the mastermind group to speak in their own group. Because it was all full of experts and everyone out there is an expert. And that's why everyone needs to write their book because a book's a tool. A book's a, a foundational piece. It's like whatever you want to achieve in life, whatever message that you're trying to share in life or whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish out there in the world, you can use a book as a tool to do that. So when you put your story into a book, like you've done so many times, 318 times at the end of this year, I think, right, Mark, for your books. And so you put your message into a book and then you share it with the world and it's out there and your thoughts are out there and you can't change it. And because of that, people can align with you or disalign with you and you become the expert. You become the expert of whatever it is you want to be known as. And you and become way, all of you out there, yeah. Preston's being humble. The book he showed up, if he'll show it again, was written with Mitzi Purdue, Preston, and myself. And it's called How to Be Up in Down Times because we're going to, we're in the vicissitudes of life. That's a nice way to saying the yogurt's hitting the fan. 
and the yogurt's hitting the fan in, in, in some atrocious ways. And the point is, you need stories to get you out of it. And one of the books, uh, Mitzi Purdue also wrote uh, my biography called Relentless, and she just got 100,000 of them out in, in Ukraine where she went under a pseudonym. And what's amazing is the, we got letters poured back into the two of us that said, this saved my life because it gave me hope again. It never dawned on me that when you got bombshells coming in, you start to lose hope and you lose faith and you lose belief. And all of a sudden, somebody reads a book. All of you have this story that needs to get show, shared, not only with your own family, but with your business, your company. It, you know, If you're in a business, it is the best business card you can get. But you've got a story. The story needs to be deployed on paper, in a book, in an audio, and you know, get to Audible and get on Amazon. And, and we'd love to help you with that if that fits what you want to do with your life. Yeah, well, I love I love too how you said you know these these stories can impact people because I can't tell you how many times you and I have been in a live event. There's been thousands of people in the crowd, and you've been up on stage, and they saw me with you, and so they come up to me and they go, "Oh, Preston, Preston, this story Mark told in this book has changed my life. I I read the." you know, the cookie story, or I read this bone story, I read this or that, you know, and it changed my life. And, but it does, it it creates these paradigm shift moments for people. When, when you can give a gift of understanding to people, you create paradigm shifts and moments and you can literally create that. And like, like I've done, you know, I've, I've created myself as the expert because I am expert at, at helping people get up. So you can create yourself as an expert for whatever it is that you're trying to do out there. So I wanted to talk about, you know, that that power of telling your story and what it creates. Like what what does it do for you and what does it do? You know, what can you do? What's everything you can do from telling your story? Well, I can tell you that let me go. I'm going to do a little bit bigger picture of my own experience. My mother was a phenomenal, the big word is raconteur. Now, she never knew that word because she was uneducated academically, but a raconteur is a storyteller, and we would go on a family vacation, and my little brother was two years young and three days younger than me, and I would sit at her feet and thought, wow, she went on a better vacation than we did because she'd wax on poetically on the phone. And I said, boy, someday I want to have that ability to tell a story that is is a story that just commands attention and interest and, and is totally, absolutely memorable. And that's what we did with the chicken soup of the soul stories. A, a story has to have a beginning, middle, and end. And, and our chicken soup stories had to have seven things. They had to cause instantaneous behavioral change. They had to cause goosebumps, sky bumps, and lo, lo, uh, inside uh, chili bumps. It, it had to uh, have your stomach change. It had to have you get weak in the knees, all kinds of visceral things. So stories can either make you or break you. And let me just go there. And I know I'm going a little further than maybe you asked, Press, but my daddy and mommy went through the depression with my older brothers and it was stretched. And the story that is always told is that a uh, another immigrant, like they were immigrants from Denmark, but this was an Italian immigrant. And he had a little hot dog stand in New York and he's making money and he's buying more hot dog stands, makes so much money. And his kid is so smart. He sends his kid off to Harvard and study economics. Well, the kid comes back and economics, you got to understand, teaches only scarcity. And if you watch my videos on uh, Mark's Minutes on YouTube, I teach fundamental abundance because God's only abundant. You and I are made to be abundant. We're made to be creative, contributors, and charitable. Anyhow, uh, this guy is selling hot dogs like crazy. His kid comes back and says, dad, 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 it's 1929. Didn't you read the paper? The paper says we're going into a depression. You shouldn't be advertising, spending all this money and sure enough, he followed the wrong story. story and the stories that you studied, the stories that you think about are either going to, are going to have a positive or a negative end. When I went bankrupt in 1974, now 50 years ago plus, is it is it? I was reading all the negative news. The minute I switched to positive self-help action books like Think and Grow Rich and like the books that I write, my life changed. It went straight up and it, it is and has continued to that. And I can attest that I've tried to help literally 7 million people live in my seminars and probably 100 million by videos and audios and TV shows and radio shows um, to have a richer, better, more meaningful, powerful life. 
by listening to stories, by reading stories, by watching my videos, by watching the TV I do, and, and pretty soon we'll have movies coming out. So story has an expanding part, but you this your story input predisposes what you process and what you output. So like in computer language, they say garbage in equals garbage out. Well, same, do 180 degrees, success, achievement in, success and achievement out. If you think positive, you're going to live a positive, fruitful, healthy, happy life. Back to you, Press. I hope I didn't over answer that. No, no, it's yeah, no, we're we're going deep dive. So there's no over answering on anything today. So I love it. No, it it does. It it creates you know your, your power, your story, um, the power of telling your story, it, it creates so much, you know, in, in your life. And it's and just my experience of writing books and being in the book business and being around books. You know, it's it's opened doors. It's created so much in the world, and it's it's just done things for me that I would have never been able to accomplish without having written a book. And what's so much fun is that even just writing a book myself and sharing that with other people inspired them to share their book or write their book. You know, because they go, "Oh, I'm going to do it," and so it's a domino effect. It's like making waves. You know, when you when you write a book when you tell your story it's like making waves because you never know where it's going to end it just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going so i want you to answer this so what why is it important for people to tell their story a story allows you to become all that you are meant to be and every one of us has the potential of a hundred percent you can be 100% in love. You can be 100% successful in your business. You can be 100% physically fit. And Preston and I have a great friend named Jeff Hoffman, who is one of the founders of, of Priceline.com and iBid. And, and he built, invented, invented all the kiosks at airport. But most recently, my wife Crystal and I spent an all day on a Thursday two weeks ago or three weeks ago with Jeff. And he was teaching the benefit of asking the right question. Now, obviously, I wrote this book right behind me called Ask the Bridge for Your Dreams, Your Destiny with Crystal. But his question was different than any I'd ever heard before. He took Priceline with one question in one year from $1 billion to $9 billion. And the question was so simple, you're going to go, oh, that's easy. I could have done that. Dang right. That's why stories are important because you read it and you go, that guy started out with no, Jeff came from Arizona, nowhere with nothing, with uh, only a mom and no dad, and she had to work three jobs just to feed him, and he ends up going to Yale, become a software guy. But his question to Priceline was he sent it out to every hotel, big and small, around the world, around the world, and what he said was, do you have any hotel rooms that you'd like to fill, and you'd like to fill instantly so it's always 100% occupied? We'll joint share the revenue. And he went from $1 billion to $99, oh, comma, billion. That's not million, that's a billion spelled with a B. And, and yes, he's a billionaire now. And we had dinner with him the night before he, he did the big seminar here in Scottsdale because we're dear close friends and Press is his friend too. And, and Jeff, Jeff's got friends everywhere and he's helping 150,000 kids around the world by telling his story. He's gotten 150,000 kids. He said, I don't care if you don't have any education, I'm going to teach you how to code. And, and they're all making money, 150,000 kids in 200 different countries. And he wants every kid to learn how to maximize, back to what I said, 100% of their full potential, to live their epic life. If you don't have an epic story, you can't have an epic life. Now, let me go to one other guy. The guy who invented nanotechnology, and some of you saw his movie called Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, is Dr. Ray Kurzweil. And we've done programs together. I've been in the same program with him, I guess I should say. And Kurzweil says... Look, I am the greatest inventor, according to Time Magazine, alive today, for, and he now has had a Google X and invents stuff for him, and he predicts the future, and his trends have been right, his books have been right. But what he says is, I decide what I'm going to do, like he decided to figure out how Braille reading and invented that. And when he said, I do it, what I do is I, at night, I go to bed, and I visualize five years from now what I'm going to say about having invented nanobots is that nanobots do blah, 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 blah. And any backwards, rever he's an engineer from MIT, he reverse engineers it and says, this is what I got. That's his story. He's inventing his story. 
Now, you're only four parts of you. You're your physical body. You're your brain, which is what got imploded with information you had to regurgitate in school. Then there's a bigger part of you, your mind, which has two basic functions. One is imagination, which what was Ray Kurzweil doing? He's imagining the future. And the best way to create the future is imagine it positively rather than negatively. And then number two is intuition. Once you ask yourself a big question, like he's partners in, in Singularity University with another guy I love a lot, um, Dr. Peter Demandis, who's got an uh, engineering degree, MIT, MD from Harvard, but they started Singularity University because the singularity is near where we're going to be able to do stuff that we've never been able to do, which is really exciting. And you can watch both of them online if you want. The, the point is, their question now is, what will you do to positively, positively affect 1 billion people in the next 10 years? Well, some of you say, well, I can't do that. But you've just heard the question. So now your subconscious can't stop working on it. And that's what we teach in this wonderful book called Ask. ASK, the bridge between dreams, your destiny. Because once you have a question circulating and percolating in your mind, it keeps going and, and suddenly it happens. Like somebody asked me about how to get uh, rid of, I'll do the most simple thing. I went to a, a physician and she said, Well, you probably have uh, uh, parasites. And she wanted to have me charge $24,000. Well, two days later, I'm at church, and I'm sitting at church at a, a luncheon with a young kid that's uh, president of his student body here at ASU, where he's had Chris and I in to talk, and I love Dom. And Dom says, boy, I've just done this parasite cleanse with this thing, and, and I'm not going to recommend it because I don't know if it works or not, but, and, and it you know costs $12 a bottle. And, and $12 versus $24,000 for exactly the same effect. When I asked the question, where can I get a parasite cleanse that really works, that somebody knows about, that I trust? That won't cost me twenty four thousand. Not that I didn't have the money, and I didn't believe that it was probably a good idea, because I believe everyone's got parasites and viruses and bacteria. That's a given. Some of them are necessary. But the point is, I heard a story. This guy told me the story. We we're out standing in the sunshine with six other people. He's telling the story, showing pictures, and he sends it to us. That's a story, and he's going to do a book about it. We're in an amazing time. You've got stories that can help people, that can save people, that can transform people, that can help them become all they were meant to be. And yes, they got to get shared, audio, video, and between the pages of a book, press. Yeah, I love too how you're saying to reverse engineer because there's a lot of people that we've worked with to help them to share their story. And what's come out of it was a new company. You know, a new business idea, a new branch of their business that they have wanted to do for a long time and haven't yet accomplished or done yet. And so it, it's another pathway to accomplishing what you want, too. But can uh, I talk to that? Yeah. <laughs> so so we finished 33 books. We got 88 somewhere in a queue right now. Mark Victor Hansen Library dot com. And one of the books we're doing is with a guy who created Teladoc, which is a multi-billion dollar business, and it's Dr. Jay Sanders at Harvard. And his best partner is, is a close friend with Press and I, uh, Dr. Michael Gordon, uh, who's first of all a lawyer and then an atomic engineer and, and now uh, obviously a best-selling author. But we're doing his book, and, and what we're talking about is health in 2050 coming back to today because they're an AI, an artificial intelligence company, and they're telling you why you're going to get sick before you get sick so you don't get sick. They're telling you why, and Dr. Jay Sanders, who's so said so brilliant, he was trained, uh, Dr. Michael Crichton, the guy who did all those great books like Jaws and all that, and he, was, he did his internship. So we're talking about a guy that's 84. Anyhow, he's so excited about writing this because we're looking backwards saying, hey, the thing that was in Star Trek, the replicator, like if you need new heart, we replicate it, we put it right in, and we do it through you know, molecular transformation. Well, he's got all that stuff down because he's studied for the last 80 years the leading edge, the bleeding edge of, of uh, medicine. And the reason we created Teladoc is that he was supposed to go do an operation in Boston. If you've been in the channel, the traffic, it's a logger jam. And he, he called and dictated to the other doctors how to do the operation. That started Teladoc. So this guy's been leading edge his whole life since he was in his 20s. And now he's, like I said, he's an octogenarian. The point is, that's a story. 
And he's telling the story of what it's going to look like because some of us are going to get to live. I plan to live to be 127 options for renewal. Of course, I'm 74 years young. Never, ever call yourself old because that de denigrates the body and God's greatest gift, the mastery of a human soul, which I said, you got a body, you got a brain, you got a mind, but bigger than big is you got a soul. The soul's connected to everything, including God. And so you can get to do stuff you didn't do. And when you start to write your book, you say, well, what's the biggest, the best, the most outrageous, greatest future I could create for myself and really source and serve people with this book? You start waking up your imagination. And, and Einstein, my teacher's teacher, I was with Dr. Buckminster Fuller for seven years in grad school. But Einstein said imagination is more important than reality. Imagination is more important than facts. He said both things at different times. And he said, if you ask a fish to climb a ladder, he can't do it, but that doesn't make the fish stupid. The fish is in water. You have a deep prowess in your mind that's loaded with stories. All we want to do inspire you today to let them bloom where you're planted. Understand you've got seed thoughts, and we want to make sure they metaphorically get watered and nourished and come to fruition. Press. Yep. And and the the importance, I mean, just you know, circling back to that that question we're still talking about, you know, the importance of a book, you know, is it it's literally it's little created the world we live in today on, on almost you know every level. It's created the foundation of all the pieces of society books have and the information written in books are are literally the operational structure of how humans work and so it's so important that smart people and good people share great wisdom and great information because it writes the future it writes the future of the way the world should be and it helps us to you know be better to learn better to you know, create more so I just love that aspect of it. Um, one of the questions that we want to talk about with the power of telling your story, and we've kind of hit a lot on it a lot, but to focus in on it more is how does it create, how does writing your book create opportunity in your life? Wow. I love the question. So my own experience was I am uh, bankrupt I am ready to kill myself, but I say, okay, God, what does he want me to do? And God just did the opposite. He said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be a professional speaker that talks to people that care about things that matter that would make a life transforming difference. So I said, then go do it. And this is all in my prayer life when I'm living in a hundred dollar apartment in Hicksville, Long Island, New York, sleeping in a sleeping bag in front of another guy's bedroom because I'm so broke upside and broken and wounded and so low I had to reach up to touch bottom. But I go to my three roommates at breakfast and I say, hey, you guys know anybody young speaking around the world uh, that I could relate to that's not a Broadway star, not a celebrity, not a doctor, not a lawyer. And they said, yeah, yeah, there's kids out in Hop Hog, Long Island, New York. We're in Hicksville and um, it's about a half hour away. And here's my ticket. I can't go. The guy was in real estate and he's wowing the audience. Now, interest rate was at 28 percent. So the market was crushed. Everybody was down and out. And I watched this guy, Chip. I'd run out there in my little beat up old pitted window permanently air condition Volkswagen. I get there just in time to see him start. He laughs, he jokes, he teases the audience and he gets them to see that there's still God in them and, and they've got this wonderful potential that they weren't recognizing and they're down on themselves by reading too much negative news, watching the late night news, then reading the newspaper and then listening and talking bad talk. Well, if you talk bad talk, you're going to get bad results. You talk good talk, you're going to get good results that are uplifted, outstanding and and forward moving, and especially if you hang around people that have succeeded more than you and they give you uh, inspirational, inspirational wisdom hand up. Anyhow, I go to, I asked him at the end, I say, I ask, because that's what our whole book is about, ask. I said, Chip, can I take you to lunch? I'll buy you lunch and teach me. I said, what do you want? I said, I want to do your business. He said, uh, if you stay out of real estate, because I own this market of five boroughs, uh, areas in New York, Long Island and Manhattan and Staten Island, all that. Uh, he said, I'll teach you, but you do life insurance because it's a bottomless pit for motivation. Uh, they'll probably like you if you can make it, but the chance you make it is one in a thousand. Anyhow, he left on a vacation for two weeks. He gave me the four questions to ask. I went out in in the first year. I did four talks a day, a thousand talks first year. Only Tony Robbins, I did that. But then people kept coming up to me and say, 
my gosh, I love that story. I want to bring it to my wife or my kids or the rest of the people, my staff or my company or, or our state. Do you have that book? And do you have it in a book? I, you know, well, OK, I'll do a book. Did a book called Stand Up, Speak Out and Win, sold 20,000 copies per year at 10 hours each. That's $200,000. Today, 50 years later, that's like $2 million. I was back on top of the world. The only mistake I made, I didn't write a lot of books. Everybody that's doing books with us now is not only, we now teach one of the 38 principles I'll teach you is you got to do sequels and prequels. When you find a gold mine, dig the gold mine. Get all of it. Like Think Grow Rich said, you, most of us are three feet from gold. And until you write your book, that gold is elusive. It's that far apart. But once I had the book, my salary went up. I'd start at $25 a talk, charge $100 for four. It, it jumped to 100 then 250 and And now I get $35,000 a talk. So it's because the book is like Press said a few minutes ago, it makes you the expert. It makes you the authority. And the word in authority is author, A-U-T-H-O-R. And, and people want you to sign their book. Whether they read it or not, it's up to them. But you hope they read it. You hope they get it all. But signed books have a tendency to get read and let them buy the signature and then take it home and put it in their bathroom or in their bedroom. And then they start reading and go, wow, this is exactly what I needed. And in my library here, I have like press has been to our hustle, I've had, uh, like 50,000 books that have been handed to me or I've read or have highlighted, you know, some part of, I haven't read every word of every book. But the point is, my friend Jim Rowan, you say just going into somebody's house where they got a library makes you feel smarter. Or if you go into a library, you feel smarter. And I know there are people that don't read now, but that is just a tragedy because to lead, you've got to read. And and uh, Charlie Trentis Jones, who did a, a little mini biography on me called uh, Recipes for Success, his great statement is you're going to be the same person you are today five years from now, except for two things, people you meet and the books you read. And, and he does miniature little books so everyone can read them in an hour. And I, I just recommend that you get on a reading program, but get on a writing program so you write your story because your story is vital to somebody else's staying alive, becoming successful, having a happier life, a good marriage, whatever it is that you want to communicate, um, it needs to be shared and it needs to feel the cold type of being pressed into a book. Preston? Yep. And, and two, you know, I, I love that. And, and looking at opportunities, not only does it give you opportunity to reach people one at a time, but it also accesses large groups. Um, we've used the you know, books as tools to reach large groups, you know, to host events and give different value to the audiences, as well as working with companies. You know, I was talking with a lady the other day that builds training programs for corporations. And she said a lot of times what she recommends a client does is to put their training into a book and formulate it in a certain way so that they can have the book to back up what they're doing with the company. And so it, it's so many different things, so many different pieces. So to to kind of uh you know close up today you know are there are there any disadvantages you know to to writing a book i mean what what are, what are, are there any downside to you know sharing your story first of all i've never in all the years i've been doing this i've been in a lot of media i've never heard that question i love the question so number one the downside would be if you write a bad book uh, that'd be tragedy. You know, you've got to make sure you've got a good editor, a company like ours that can take you and, and make your story irresistibly compelling read because we are a story book. We are a writing company. We ghost write it for and with you and we co-create a will become your masterpiece under your name. That's why it's called ghost writing. And, and we say fiction sells 10,000 to one over nonfiction. So, and, and Cabot Robert, my motivational teacher lived here in Arizona uh, when I started and he taught Zig Ziglar and I had to sell a lot of product from a platform, which blew my mind, but it always has to have a book with it or a, a set of tapes or a video. Anyhow, Cabot said, some books are so bad in his Southern accent. He was born in Mississippi, like Zig's it was. Uh, anyhow, he said, I wish the guy had written the book. I, I, I wish the guy had written the ad and written the book. I wish the guy had writ, wrote the ad had also written the book because the ad was great, but the book was not worth $10 or $20 or $30. 
It's just it's such a funny line. So number one, I'd say you don't want to do that because you know uh, your first. It, you don't want to put yourself out with something that's going to work negatively towards you or towards your customer or client or patient, right? So that'd be the biggest number one. I mean, I can go deeper if you need me to. Nope. No, I, I think creating positive information and positive impacts and positive books is the, the main theme. And if you're, if you're in line with that, then I think you're doing good. I agree. Thank you. Well, any final closing thoughts or anything else that you want to share today? Well, because press has listened to me so many times. Obviously, we have Mark Fitch Hansen Library dot com. But press, would you please tell them about Hansen Institute because it's such a cool idea what we created? Yeah, so we are creating a pool of resources that are resources created by Mark. So Mark has spent his entire life writing stories speaking from stage, training business owners, and doing things to help uplift people and uplift people's stories, businesses, and what they're doing on their journey. And so we've compiled that at the Hansen Institute. So you can go to hanseninstitute.com and check out resources for Mark. You can get his new training, Ask. So uh, they've got the book, Ask, The Bridge from Your Dreams to Your Destiny which I have right here myself. And so you can check out the ask training Mark's offering. You can check out the book and the ghost writing services that Mark and his team provides. You can check out the master author training. If you want to write a book yourself and you want to do all the work and you've got the story that you want to tell, but you don't have a couple pieces and you need some direction or you want to understand really the capabilities of what you can do with a book. You can take the master author training and become a master author yourself. And so there's a resource pool for people out there. Check it out. And, you know, I just, I want to thank you, Mark, for joining me today. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you. And I appreciate you for being the impact storyteller that you are. And for you being the powerful person and telling your story. Because what you've done in the world by being bold and telling your story and sharing your story has literally changed humanity. So thank you everyone out there. If you liked the show, if you got value from today, you know, click subscribe, click like, we appreciate you. If you need support in your life, reach out to us. You know where to find us. If you want to get powerful personal training, check out formulaeq.com. I've got the Academy Formula EQ.com where we build powerful people. We build the emotional quotient. Everyone knows the IQ. We build the EQ, the emotional quotient, build powerful people to go create and do anything you want in your life. Thank you for joining us today and have an incredible day. Bye, everybody.